Millions of people have seen the videos on the internet. Oh God, and look at that. Who's that in the background? Bullies taunting other kids, and sometimes it escalates into serious violence. I'm Balthorn, and I've been bullied my whole life. Something was happening to my son at school that was changing. Sometimes they'll stop, sometimes they wouldn't, sometimes they'll wait like two weeks and then they'll start bullying me again. Pigs. Kids and parents all dealing with this problem. Now, after a spate of teen suicides linked to bullying, schools and lawmakers are taking action. But is it enough? That question tonight on this special edition of True Crime Stories. Good evening, everyone. I'm Liz Habib. The statistics on bullying are eye-opening. One-third of all kids have been caught up in this. Years later, as adults, victims are more likely to suffer depression. Bullies are more likely to wind up in jail. And bullying isn't just physical violence. According to bullyingstatistics.org, it's a website, the most pervasive kind of bullying is emotional. Things like rejecting or isolating another kid, humiliating them in front of other kids, calling them names, that kind of things. Sometimes this goes online, like putting up hurtful Twitter and Facebook posts and encouraging other kids to join in on the criticism. As usual, Robin Sachs, our Fox 11 legal analyst, is here to talk about this tonight. Robin, it seems like this is the crime du jour. Bullying. It, it is the crime du jour. It's the crime du jour because it, now we have a label. We have a word for behavior, but it shouldn't be mixed up with just being someone being a jerk or someone being a bad kid. It is systemic, intentional, repeated behavior time and time again. And frankly, it's a, it's a form of violence. I really believe a lot of people, even as adults, can relate to some of the things that we're talking about. So as we go throughout the evening, we'll be talking about these things. It is bad enough for kids to be bullied, but there are other victims, too. For parents, the ordeal just can be heartbreaking. One of them is Michelle Golip. Michelle kept a video diary while her son was dealing with bullies. Is this that hard? Is it that hard to see what is happening To my son. I wish the parents of the bullies would understand and I would never want them to have to go through this and I just don't know what today's gonna bring. Joining us now are Michelle Golan and her husband Michael is here as well to talk about all of this. Michelle, your emotion in that. I know, I haven't seen that in a long time. So yeah, it's it was a horrible time for really, for our son. But before we go anywhere, everyone should know that Michelle Golan is a psychologist, a licensed psychologist. She's just not just a mom who happened to take this video. She's someone who professionally deals with this. And so when I saw this and heard about this, it was like if it can happen to Michelle and Michael, a psychologist and a lawyer, it certainly can, can happen, happen to, to anybody. anybody. Yeah. Michael, right. tell us what happened to your son. Uh, he was continually during the school year reporting incidences that were happening to him where he would get isolated like you talked about in the intro that was something that he complained about a lot he would be included in games with kids and then excluded and he didn't understand it he would have friends that he would hang out with on the weekends and then they wouldn't hang out with him at school and we would meet with the teachers if there was some big incident and we would talk to them about these things that were happening and they would kind of push it down uh, well, tell us that it really, you know, it was just kids being kids. Well, and I think what it really started in December of last year where one of the first incidents was that our son was called a fag. And we had to, and we go to, we love our school. We are founding parents of our school. Right. It's a public charter. We love it. And we had to convince the principal that even using that word, was bullying. How did you find it out? Was, it was. Did your son tell you? No. How? It was we, reported to us by the school. Well, it was also reported that, and this is where the shrink hat just clicked on. It was reported because they had brought the kid that had name called him, and humiliated him publicly, which is what bullying is, and it's a power differential as well. And it doesn't have to be repetitively repetitive. It can also just be 
inconsistently done, but enough, even one or two incidents that bring it to that level. He was brought together with the bully and the remedy happened, but he didn't have any redemption. None of his friends, there were, there were kids all around and Asher was humiliated. Right. So Asher being our child, and so he's sort of, even though he's getting bullied, he's sort of empowered, he started talking to his friends like that wasn't right. And going and went to right. a teacher, and, and then was he like, was chastised for doing that because that was making the bully uncomfortable. Well, well Robin, the the whole <laughs> taking the <laughs> kids bullied we got and putting the call. them, well, yeah, putting them with the bully. My goodness, it's taking the person who's the victim here and putting them together with the person doing it. Well, I look at bullying a lot yeah. like domestic violence. It's the yeah. same, exactly what Michelle says. It is the same cycle of violence. It's n it's all about power and control. It's about one person having the perceived power versus someone who's perceived to be of weaker power. Yes. And then there's a third party to it. And that's the bystander. Those are the people who are all around the right. bullying situation who are either encouraging the situation or not doing anything about the situation or don't know what to do about the situation. And that's what we find in this now, again, is what we find is that it's the bystanders, and we know this now in studies, it's the bystanders in school and also the staff that are the ones that actually can change the behavior. The idea that we bring but in... But kids. I mean, do, you can't expect another kid, right, to change the behavior you really would expect well, it from the parent well you well, actually they can be taught what they can do or the, or the teachers. What, you know su mm -hmm. suggestions of how to do things one of the one of the biggest things that was so hurtful for us is the school you know initially we went in and they were very sympathetic and then when we started demanding action we would get pushed away there was silence they wouldn't tell us what they were doing um, and then at the end of the, and we pulled our kid out of school for the last week. Both was, kids, because I know, didn't feel comfortable even having our daughter there because of yeah. what we were. And their solution was to have our son come to school but be isolated right. so he's safe. And, and they no, that doesn't make sense at all. Right. No, there's yeah. constant rewarding of the bully. That's yes. what ends up happening. Right. The bully ends up getting rewarded. And by the way, I personally believe that the bullying behavior is learned at home. So where these kids learn to be bullies are from their parents, likely. I or think there've been some cyclical type thing with this, like a domestic violence type thing, haven't there? With bullying, it is power and control. And I think that you know there is a honeymoon phase where you feel like it's a, there's an apology that's happened, and then you go back for more, and then and then you end up recanting because you're too embarrassed. I mean that kind of thing that happens. Domestic, domestic violence, violence happens yeah. in the right. bullying Absolutely. scenario. Michael, what do you want to happen? What could happen? What would you expect as a solution? Well, I want the the administration at our school to take real action. You know, they, they talk a lot, but they don't seem to be really committed to teaching the bully the proper behavior, what he should or shouldn't do, bringing the parents together. We wanted that. When the second incident, which was a violent incident, occurred, um, we wanted to have all the parents get together and we were like squashed to right. do that. It was Why don't very... you back you up, the violent, what was the violence? Well, Asher again was doing, socially trying to engage with these kids and they did and, and they were playing, and this happens and, I, and it's even hard for me to say but I know this occurs with bullies, bully, bullying and kids that feel low self-esteem and they're trying to just get along. They had sort of abandoned him and like re were, would run away and make fun of him and run away. And so he came up with this game. Well, why don't we play and you can aim at me? Right, so oh, that's, that's trying to like get himself back into the group. Right. What and does Asher want now? You know, we talk about what we I want. Know, what I does know. Asher I want? have to say, I, well, I said this because, to him. I think yeah. I'm. I'm more nervous than anyone, and I'm doing everything I can to not give that out to, to Asher. And I asked him in the car um, yesterday, you know, how are you feeling about going back to school? And and I said, you know, and, and I think it's good, let's other friends that you can try to find, and he knows what we've been doing, and, and he knows we're coming on here. And, 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 I, and he said to, to me, you know, Mom, haters are gonna be haters. Oh. All right, Michelle, Michael, right. let me leave you with that. We have a lot more to talk about. We thank you so much for being so frank and sharing your experience. Sure. Thank you. At the top of the show, we highlighted a viral video of a young victim fighting back against a bully at school. The video was posted on YouTube a year ago. This was an internet sensation. We just wanted to let you know the kids were not badly hurt. The fight happened at a school in Sydney, Australia. The boy who started it says he's sorry. 
He also says he was the victim of bullies when he was younger. That's that cyclical thing we were talking about. Casey Haynes, the victim who fought back, he's become sort of a hero. He even has a website devoted to him. All right, more to talk about. Still ahead, a local lawmaker who's trying to change how we deal with bullies nationwide. We'll see if it's something that can help the Golans. Hair pulling, just some of the videos that show bullying right here. You're watching it. You can find these kind of videos everywhere online. And it could be happening at the school your kids go to. The issue of bullying is much more in the limelight today than it was just, oh, geez, just about two years ago. But some lawmakers say not enough is being done. One of them is Orange County Congresswoman Linda Sanchez. Schools have to be safe for you guys to learn. And you can't learn well if you're always looking over your shoulder because you're afraid that somebody's gonna beat you up, right? Well, that's why I'm trying my hardest to help too. I recently introduced a bill in Congress called the Safe Schools Improvement Act. And if that becomes a law, then all schools in every state, in every part of this country, will have to have rules in place that protect students from bullying. There's a good lesson for kids on a couple of levels, right? Sanchez's bill would give school principals more tools to identify bullying. The bill also provides emergency intervention programs to stop the bullying before someone is seriously hurt or killed. Sanchez also wants to provide counseling for victims so that they're less likely to commit suicide or retaliate with their own violence. Plus, she wants teachers to be able to instruct students about the consequences of bullying and other kinds of harassment. California has recently taken some action of its own to combat bullying but it took the death of a teenager to make that happen. Seth's law went into effect this summer. It requires all California schools to have an anti-bullying policy, and it mandates a timeline for school officials to follow when investigating student claims of bullying. So they can't just let things drop. They can't say what the Golans heard. They can't say kids will be kids. Seth Walsh is a 13-year-old in Tehachapi who killed himself after years of relentless bullying. Let's talk about some of these laws and the difference they may make. Listen, think about this. The fact that we actually have to have lawmakers go out and make a law that says that schools should have an anti-bullying policy. I yeah. mean, isn't that somewhat ridiculous yes. that we have to even have that as a law and policy? I mean, isn't it something that we should every day be able to do is send our kids to school and know that at the very minimum that they're safe from getting beat up or emotionally hurt it by is. other kids? It is, but the goal even said that way, the response they get is kids will be kids. There's a lack of recognizing what's going on here. And I don't think those laws prevent that from happening because you still need people to identify the signs. You need to still have people, teachers and administrators, recognize that the certain behavior that's being described is not only real and true, but consistent with bullying. If you decide something's not a bullying situation, then guess what? Those rules don't, don't work. Okay, so the parents must be, that's in their hands now. The parents have to do something. What do they do for this? Jess? just like everything else this is a situation the parents must be involved I think that there's this mentality and parents fear of oh my god if I get involved I'm coddling my child too much or I'm babying my child and they really need to learn how to stand up for themselves but at some point parents do need to intervene and the number one thing is I think parents need to believe when their kids disclose to them when this happens I think so often that we end up re-victimizing and re-blaming the bully child because we're too scared to address the issue okay, ourselves. But they need to believe that's one step but then we we heard Michelle say her son said mom haters are going to hate kids they don't want the attention. They don't want their parents to do anything about the bullying. How do you handle that? But a kid can't learn to stand up for themselves if their parent doesn't stand up for them. Just like every other lesson we learn from our parents, how our parents respond is going to teach the kids how to respond for themselves. Are these laws, are these legal rights with teeth? Well, yes and no. I mean, these are these laws that we're talking about are in the education code. There's no punishment necessarily right. for not following them. Schools should have these policies in place, but really, I think you have to take measures into your own hands. If things aren't resolved, you have to tell and tell and tell until someone does something. And if that means, I mean, we've heard cases of parents going out and actually getting restraining orders for their right. kids on behalf of other kids so that schools are forced to put a kid in another classroom. And I hate to suggest the most extreme measures, but sometimes in extreme circumstances, you have to take extreme measures. Which is what you do always say. All right, still ahead. We're gonna hear from some of the cast members from that movie that changed how many of us think about bullying.
The movie Bully helped raise an enormous amount of awareness about the problem. And if you haven't seen it, the movie's scheduled to come out on DVD next month. It's September. The cast talked about how bullies affected them at a screening here in L.A. When you use the word bully, people think, um, you know, they made fun of you because you're poor. They didn't like your shirt because that's what it was when I was a kid. Um, but Alex was assaulted. I mean, these kids are doing things nowadays that if they were 18, they'd be in jail. Uh, very depressing. I didn't have many friends back then. But in the end, I... It turned out pretty well. This film says you don't have to change the world. You just have to look out for each other. We want to honestly depict what bullying sounds like, what bullying feels like, how pervasive it is, and also the bravery that it takes so many kids to get on the bus every day. They are just as good as gold. So much attention in that movie. And Robin, maybe those people are the lucky ones who got the help and the attention. But you really advocate for people who are victims of this. I do, and I think that there's awareness, and then there's being aware of uh -huh. what's going on in your home. And I think that parents need to look at the signs and symptoms of behavior within their own kids to determine are their kids being bullied because kids may not disclose so that parents need to look for signs like drop in grades or uh, sudden weight loss or uh, not hanging out with people or being scared to go to school or being very sad and sullen after receiving an email or not participating in the way they were doing those signs and symptoms are really the awareness we need to have just knowing that there's a problem here in society is fine and dandy but unless you're aware of what's going on with your own kid then you're not aware at all as an attorney what's been like for you over the past say year since we've started talking about this so much have you have people reached out to you there is not a time that I go on television that I don't go on television when I don't get you know uh, hundreds of calls emails people saying this is what happened to me and the school doesn't care and this is what happened and this is where this where I was failed and that's I think that that's what's constantly a theme or a constant theme throughout this whole thing is that people feel failed and feel victimized and re-victimized and what ends up happening is that the kids start parentifying the parent because they feel like they are causing their parents so much distress oh. by the bullying that's happened to them and so what I say to those parents is you are doing the right thing you are the anchor in your kids life and you have have to continue to fight and the kids are going to want to deny they're going to want to minimize and they're going to want to blame themselves but parents need to keep that in perspective all right still ahead how to find out if your school is adhering to the latest bullying policies Wondering if your school's adhering to the latest laws and rules about bullying, find out if they're abiding by the state's policy for student conduct. You can download the state's sample policy for bullying prevention. You're looking at it along with a lot of other helpful information at the California Department of Education website. There's a link on their front page where you can find this. Robin, what do you think the biggest misconception is about this? I think that there is a pervasive view in our society that the only way to deal with a bully is to stand up to a bully to fight back. So I think a lot of parents feel that they should teach their kids how to actually duke it out. And that's the number one thing that parents should not do to their teach their kids. Parents should empower them with words and with action, but fighting back is just going to make the cycle continue. Yeah, right. My grandma used to say, they hit you, hit them back. And harder, right? Right. I mean, that's what we were that was what we were raised with. But that, that is not what you were supposed to do. Not only could that end up making the bully child get in trouble mm -hmm. and, and confuse who is who, but you're teaching your kid to act in a violent way, and that's exactly the opposite of what we want to do. Remember, this is learned behavior, most likely, coming from the home. So we want to keep this as very different and di distinct and use words and standing up and action as the way to fight it. So if we walk away with one thing, I think it's shouted from the mountaintops if you think it's happening to you. That's right. And don't stop shouting until someone does something. If the school isn't going to do something, go to the school district. If the school district isn't going to go to some do something, you know, go to your government officials. You have to keep doing it. If you have to go to the courts, then you go to the courts. And I'm going to tell you, Robin, we've done this We've given this advice before. Robin has given this advice and it works. All right. That's it for us tonight. We hope we've helped you understand this issue of bullying and what some people are doing to stop it. Robin and I are going to be back with more true crime stories in the months ahead. Thank you for watching.